Good morning. Thanks for joining me for this webinar to close out the 2021 National Veterans Small Business Week event. A little bit about National Veterans Small Business Week. National Veterans Small Business Week is a time to honor the service and celebrate the impact of our nearly 1.8 million veteran entrepreneurs who are a driving force in our economy, generating approximately $1 trillion annually and employing nearly 4 million people says SBA Administrator Isabel Guzman. The SBA team is committed to providing capital, marketplace opportunities, and a supportive network of veterans business outreach centers, like the Florida Veterans Business Outreach Centers, so that our veterans and military spouses can continue to do what they do best, face hardships head on to build, innovate, and adapt their business to survive and to thrive. We're glad you're here. Today, we're gonna to talk about new legislation in Florida to ease some of the restrictions on the cottage food laws. Record. Cottage food laws, you might wonder, you know, why, why are we doing this? Why am I talking about this? Really, if you think about it, this type of business is ideal for a military spouse, a veteran, a veteran who is considering separation and entrepreneurship, because you can kind of do this as a solopreneur business and a home-based business, which is also a family-based business. We will discuss the cottage food operations, new legislation passed on July 1st to ease some of those restrictions. 2021 is a fresh start in so many ways, but never have so many states looked to refresh their cottage food laws. This year is truly unprecedented. Over half the states tried to improve their law for selling homemade food, whether it be through a cottage food law, food freedom law, micro restaurant law, a lawsuit, rule change, or city ordinance. In most years, usually about six states would update their cottage food law. But this year, a whopping 26 states worked on cottage food reform. Things are looking better than ever for the cottage food industry in Florida and nationwide. I'm Brenton Peacock, Director of the Florida Veterans Business Outreach Center. I'll be your host of today's program. I'm glad that you're here. Let's dig in. The legislation that we're gonna cover is Senate Bill 1294, Chapter 500, and revisions to the requirements for the sale of cottage foods, including the Home Sweet Home Law which was effective on July 1st, 2021. I've waited till today to share this with a wide audience to help close out our National Veteran Small Business Week. Home-based food businesses are now under state legislation and are exempted from some food and building permitting requirements. Local governments may not prohibit cottage food operations or regulate cottage food products by cottage food operations. Home businesses now can make up to $250,000 annually up from the current or the former $50,000. So once again, the cottage food legislation raises the limit you can make up to $250,000 up from $50,000. Internet sales, in-person delivery, and sale at venues like farmer's markets are now allowed. Cottage food operations, are still not allowed to sell wholesale. All cottage food products offered for sale to the general public must be labeled made in a cottage food operation that is not subject to Florida's food safety regulations. Cottage foods are still prohibited from being sold wholesale. Policy still requires proper food labeling. A cottage food operation means a person who produces or packages cottage food products at his or her residence and sells those products. A cottage food product means food that is not a potentially hazardous food as defined by the regulation as sold in a cottage food operation. And a residence is defined to mean a primary residence that is occupied by an individual who operates a cottage food operation that contains a single kitchen with appliances designed for common residential use. The residence may contain one stove or oven, 
which may be a double oven designed for non-commercial use. Potentially hazardous foods are plant food that is heat treated or consists of raw seed sprouts, cut melons, leafy greens, cut tomatoes or mixtures of cut tomatoes that are not modified in a way so that they are unable to support pathogenic microorganisms growth or toxin formation, or garlic and oil mixes that are not modified in a way so they're unable to support pathogenic microorganism growth or toxin formation. Eggs, milk, and dairy products, including hard and soft cheeses, yogurt, cush fret fruit, cut fresh fruits or vegetables, juices made from fresh fruits or vegetables like apple cider, ice or ice products, salsa, fresh or dried meat or meat products, including jerky, vegetables, cheeses, or any food that requires pressure cooking like canning such as pickles. Some more potentially hazardous food include eggs, dried or fried meat or meat products, including jerky, bacon, if not fully cooked, juices made from fruits or vegetables, beans, all types of cooked beans, cheeses, soft unripened cheeses, such as cottage, ricotta, brie and cream cheese that are more hazardous than hard cheeses, all cheeses should be refrigerated. Coffee creamy agents, all non-dairy coffee creamy agents in liquid form, especially those with high ultra temperature, deli meat, garlic, mayonnaise or other acidified salad dressings, onions, cooked pasta, pastries that are filled with meat, cheese or cream, pies, meat, fish, poultry, natural cream, synthetic cream, custard, pumpkin, Pies covered with whipped toppings that support micro, microbacterial growth. Potatoes that are cooked, baked, boiled, or fried. Any variety of refried beans. Boiled, steamed, or fried rice, or rice cooked in sushi. Sauces like hollandaise, sour cream, soy protein, and whipped butter. Some other potentially hazardous food items include fish or shell products. Baked goods which require refrigeration, such as cream, custard, meringue pies, cakes, pastries and creams with icings or fillings. Milk and dairy products, including hard, soft, and cottage cheese and yogurts, and cut fresh fruits or vegetables. Kind of round out our list. Also things like flavored oil, hummus, garlic dips, and sauces. Canned pickled products such as corn relish, pickles and sauerkraut are forbidden, raw seed sprouts, cut fresh fruits or vegetables, apple cider, canned fruits or vegetables, chutneys, vegetable butters, and jellies. Potentially hazardous food means food that requires time and temperature control for safety, or TCS, to limit pathogenic microorganism growth or toxic formation. Any animal food that is raw or heat treated, dehydrated meats or jerkies are not allowed. Meat products or foods with meat fillings are not allowed. Some food require time and temperature control to maintain safety and potentially hazardous foods. These foods that require time, temperature control to limit the growth of pathogenic microorganisms or the production of toxins. These foods have a well-documented history of causing foodborne illness when certain time and temperature requirements are not met for cooking, holding, reheating, or cooling. Adequate time and temperature controls can allow for microbial growth. Examples include improper hot or cold holding, improper cooling, improper cooking, and improper reheating, leaving food at a temperature danger zone, which is 40 degrees up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit for more than two hours, these foods readily support the growth of microorganisms because they're high in nutrients and available water, and because they have an acidity and a food neutrality for slight acidic acceptability. So to maintain the safety of the time and temperature controlled food, follow these four simple steps. Clean, separate, cook, and chill. Clean, separate, cook, and chill to prevent foodborne illness.
Here are some approved cottage cheese or cottage foods that include cakes, pastries, cookies, candies and confections, honey, jams, jellies and preserves, fruit pies and dried fruits, popcorn balls, dry herbs, seasonings and mixes, homemade pasta, cereals, trail mixes, and granolas are, al are allowed. Cottage food operations, including bread rolls and biscuits, do not require a license or a permit from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, and they are not inspected by any state government entity. Can I sell my cottage food products to restaurants? No, cottage food is not allowed to be sold to local restaurants or grocery stores. All types of these sales are considered wholesale and are not allowed under this law. Can I grind any type of grain into flour? Yes, provided the packaging and labeling requirements are met. Can I freeze homegrown products and use it for making baked goods like sweetbreads? Yes, as long as the frozen fruits or vegetables are incorporated into the batter and properly baked, labeled, and packaged. The baked goods may not be decorated or garnished with fruit or frozen fruits or vegetables. Can I make and sell dry bread mixes or instant bread mixes? Yes, any kind of dry baking mix, such as dry bread mixes, are an acceptable product to sell. Can I bake bread in a wood-fired oven? Yes, provided that the oven is in your home kitchen. If I lease a space in a retail building where I operate a small antique shop, as a cottage food baker, can I sell my own baked goods from that shop under the, under the uh, new guidelines? No, since your antique shop does not meet the definition of a cottage food operation, you would not be able to sell your cottage food product from this type of location. Can I make and sell cottage food products in my motorhome kitchen? No. Can I make cottage food products in a rented kitchen and sell them under the cottage food guideline? No, only cottage food items can be made in your home kitchen. Only potable water may be properly constructed with an on-site well or municipal water system can be used. Are there any concerns related to my home septic tank system? Depending upon the nature and volume of the food products you'll make for sale, there can be an adverse effect on the existing system in your home. The adequacy of a home system to handle additional wastewater loading must be evaluated by the local health department. The health department can advise you if modifications to your existing system are needed. Talk about some food licensing requirements. Cottage food operations require no license or permit from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services and are not inspected by any state government entity. But local governments can enact ordinances restricting a cottage food operation in your personal residence. So always check with your city zoning agency for your home business requirements. A cottage food operation must provide the department with written documentation to verify that it's annual gross sales upon the department's request to do so. Cottage food operators are considered, are currently prohibited from selling or offering food that is wholesale. Cottage food operations must be prepackaged with a label that contains the name and address of the cottage food operation, the name of the cottage food product, the ingredients of the cottage food product in descending order by prominence according to weight, and the net weight or net volume of the cottage food product. You must identify if any of your ingredients are made from one of the following groups, milk, eggs, wheat, peanuts, soybeans, fish, including shellfish, crab, lobster, or shrimp, and tree nuts, such as almonds, walnuts, and pecans. For ingredients made with wheat-based products, you can include the allergen in the ingredient list. Include the allergen statement contains after the list. The contained statement must reflect all of the allergens found in the product. 
there are eight major food allergies. Those are milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, cream, half and half, sour cream, sherbet, custard, whey, curds, egg mayonnaise, egg yolk, fish anchovies, bash, catfish, cod, flounder, grouper, haddock, mahi-mahi, perch, pike, pollock, salmon, sole, snapper, swordfish, tilapia, trout, tuna, and crustacean shellfish crab, lobster, shrimp, crawfish, tree nuts, almond, beech nut, Brazil nuts, bush nut, cashew, chestnut, coconut, filbert, ginkgo nut, hazelnut, leche nut, macadamia nut, pecan, pine nut, pistachio, shea nut, walnuts, beer nuts, or ground nuts. That's a lot of nuts. In general, honey must be prepackaged. Florida's honey industry is ranked among the top five in the nation. There are nearly 5,000 registered beekeepers in the state of Florida, managing approximately 630,000 colonies. Unfortunately, high colony loss of rates of honeybees have been reported throughout the world. The Florida Beekeepers Association is dedicated to keeping Florida apiculture strong and healthy now and in the future. General honey must be prepackaged, bottled, or cut comb in containers with label affixed that contains the following information printed in English. The beekeeper's name must be on the label. No fictitious name or business names are allowed. The full street address of the cottage food operation should be included. The name of the product, the single word honey, is acceptable. The ingredients of the cottage food product in descending order of prominence by weight. If honey contains any flavoring, spice, or added ingredient, then that must be listed. For example, lime essence honey, or wildflower honey, or peach pot honey. The sale of cottage food products are prohibited for wholesale and cannot sell cottage food since they're from an unimproved source. For example, you can't sell cottage foods to a restaurant. But you may sell your cottage foods directly to the consumer and not outside of the state of Florida. You must sell and deliver your cottage food product directly to consumers only. Cottage food products must be sold and delivered directly to the consumer or to the consumer's private events, such as a venue that has a wedding or a birthday party. No cottage food operators may advertise for sale, offer for sale, and accept payment for cottage food products that are delivered by mail order. It must be delivered directly from the source to the event. Internet sales are allowed and payments are allowed over the internet. Can I sell my cottage food products for special events such as weddings and birthday parties? Yes, provided the cottage food product are sold and delivered by the cottage food operator themselves during the time of the event. Can cottage food products be picked up or distributed by a third party? No, cottage food products
If you'll all stand by for just a moment, we're checking on the audio issue. Hang on just one moment. We're going to make a, a, a transition. Can you hear me okay? We had to change some things around, but I think we're back. Uh, where we need to be. Let's see. Let's see what was that? So we talked about um, moving ahead with operators, uh, food operators being able to sell directly to the customer. Payments are allowed over the internet. Next slide, please. Yes, it's slides. And we're back. Thank you. Uh, good times in the world of, uh, of Zoom. No cottage food operators may advertise for sale, off for sale, and accept payments from cottage food products on their website. But the products, whether they can do that, but the products are prohibited from being delivered by mail order. The law does allow payments over the internet, but restricts selling to restaurants. Outside sales. 
Sales are approved at farmers markets, flea markets, and roadside stands, providing you have no other food items in your space that requires a food permit. Cottage food products may be sold and delivered directly to the consumer or the consumer's private venue, such as a wedding or birthday party. Cottage food operators can sell cottage foods only within the state of Florida, but not across state lines. The farmer's market where I want to sell my product says I need a food license. Even though I am a cottage food business, can they still require a license? The answer is yes. Even though an entity may meet the requirements of a cottage food operation, some farmer's markets or other direct marketing venues may require a vendor's license. To meet those requirements, contact your local farmer's markets board and other government agencies that are enforcing that scope of law. Can I sell my cottage food under permitted or licensed vendor as a mobile unit at a farmer's market or other temporary event in another state? Nope. Cottage food products must be sold with the associated regulated food business under the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services or Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation. All cottage food products must be sold separately from non-cottage food products. Now remember, we're only talking about cottage food products in today's program. How do I sell my cottage food products? You may sell your cottage food products from your residence directly to the consumer. Sales are also approved by mail order at farmer's markets, flea markets, and roadside stands, provided you have no other food items in your space that do require a food permit. May I sell my cottage food under a permitted licensed vendor, such as a mobile market for a temporary event? No, cottage food products may not be sold or associated with a regulated food business under the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services law. All cottage food products must be sold separately from non-cottage food products. If I have a roadside stand that is already inspected and permitted, can I sell my cottage food products? No. A permitted food establishment cannot sell cottage food products since they originate from an unapproved source. In other words, they originate from your home. Can I use the internet and my website to sell cottage food products? Yes, Florida law allows orders and payments over the internet. May I sell my cottage food products to a restaurant? No, cottage foods are not allowed to be sold to local restaurants or grocery stores. These types of sales, again, are considered wholesale and are not allowed under this law. Can I place my cottage food product in a store or restaurant on consignment? No, cottage food products cannot be sold on consignment. The sale must be person to person, which means that the producer sells to the actual customer. Can I sell my cottage food products to a wholesaler, broker, or distributor? No, under college cottage food guidance, it is not legitimate to sell to the producer, broker, or distributor who will then resell the product. It's best to use a pH meter properly calibrated on the day used. A pH meter is ideal, but may not always be available. Short range pH paper test strips, commonly known as litmus paper, can be used instead. The product should normally have a pH of 0.4 or lower, and the product's range includes a pH of 4.6. Although inspections are not required, you should consider doing the following. Clean work surfaces and sanitize them with bleach water before and after. Keep your ingredients separate one from another. Unprocessed foods and keep household pits out of your work area. Provide and keep a record of your gross sales receipts as well as the amount of cottage foods canned and sold, as well as the food prep preparation date. Amount of food that is prepared and sold, sales, dates, and locations, receipts, including procedures and ingredients, the gross sales receipts, as well as the results of your pH test. You want to keep up with your recipes, your sales, and the results 
of your of your pH test that you take. Otherwise, why do it? So if results are asked for, that way you have it. Many commercial kitchens have either closed temporarily or permanently due to COVID-19. A licensed kitchen is an inspected, registered commercial kitchen where food intended for sale can be safely made. In accordance with laws and regulations, many licensed kitchens open their doors at low cost to local food entrepreneurs. If you want to make and sell your homemade preserves, salsa, spaghetti sauce, refrigerated foods, you will need to use a licensed kitchen to prepare that food. Ghost kitchens, also known as dark kitchens, are commercial kitchens optimized for food delivery. Each kitchen is located in areas with high concentration of delivery demand. The kitchens themselves don't have a storefront and the staff usually prepares dishes off their menus that are only available for delivery. They are kept a departure from the traditional brick and mortar restaurant concept, having no seating, no storefronts and no wait staff. Entrepreneurial ghost restaurateurs rent and operate locations to find to virtual kitchens. This means they're not opposed to a traditional brick and mortar concept to their ghost kitchen. Using a ghost kitchen, you can sell your preserves, jams, salsas. Also learn about Florida co-packers, where you can sell pickles, cookies, pies, cakes, fruits and vegetable juices, homemade preserves, salsa, spaghetti sauce, apple sauce, apple butter, jams and jellies, you will need a licensed kitchen to prepare that food. Co-packers can provide an entrepreneur with a variety of services in addition to manufacturing and packaging. They often can help with the formation of a product. The co-packer may function only as a packer of other people's products or may be in a business with its own product line. They may be in fact manufacturing several competing products. You wanna choose a co-packer with experience making the type of product and packaging that you need. You also want to choose a co-packer that's located close to your source of materials or your marketing or distribution centers to reduce your costs. A co-packer is an established food or bakery manufacturing company that produce your company's product lines to specifications. And of course they do it for a fee, but you can save money on the cost of your capital because you don't have to pay for a facility or the equipment needed to, pr to produce it. Other requirements for on-site wells, only potable water from a properly constructed on-well site or municipal water system can be used. Pet treats are not considered cottage foods. Nonprofits do not qualify because nonprofits don't have a single, a single family domestic residence, therefore they can't be a cottage food industry. Local cities, counties, and even HOAs can enhance or rather can enact more restrictive rules. A cottage food operation must comply with all applicable county and city laws and ordinances regulating the preparation processes and storage of cottage food products. So you can't hire outside sources. A cottage food operator in Florida may not hire employees of any type, not temporary, full-time, part-time, or volunteers. This means as a cottage food, you and your family do all the work. In other words, it's not a traditional business where you hire employees. Cottage foods must be properly packaged and labeled. Cottage food operators can serve free samples for tasting, but the samples must be prepackaged. -pre and proper labeling is always important. So what if you don't meet the requirements of a cottage food industry? Don't give up. You still may be able to make it and sell it commercially through a startup approach. First, you may be able to rent space in a licensed commercial kitchen. Second, if that doesn't work, you can get a co-packer to make your food for you. So this is talking about the cottage food that you make in your home, this law only applies to food that you make and cook and sell directly to your customer and the types of places you can sell it. 
you have any questions, this will be the time to take those. This is how you contact me in my office. And here's more information on the food safety law. You can call 800-HELP-FLA for more information. Are there any questions at this time? Any questions in the chat that we can talk about? We still got a little bit of time ahead of us for things that I might have covered or haven't covered. Let's see, let me unmute everybody here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. No, that didn't work. I'm going to ask everybody to unmute their, their microphones and uh, see if we have any questions that we can talk about. Any questions about the things that we discussed in today's uh, webinar? I think it's exciting to be able to start to a work. business and do a business from your home. No, I was just going to move ahead. Do we have a question? Okay. Is he looking at it? Yeah, this Mashika had one. Are you allowed to bake cheese in the breads? Cheese in the breads. Let's see. That would be, um, I think you can do that. If you bake it in the bread, you can even freeze it if you bake it in the bread. But always back me up with uh, checking the uh, the regulations. But that seems to be something that, that that should be covered because the cheese is in the bread. Therefore, it won't uh, contribute to large amounts of uh, bacteria growth. Any other questions? And this is an ideal way to maybe be a solopreneur to do something to kind of enhance your income. But really, if you stop and look at this, this is going to be kind of a full-time job. Imagine if you were to get a contract or an agreement with a local um, hotel that hosts a lot of parties and be their go-to cake baker. If you deliver that cake and take those orders directly to the event, you can do this as a cottage food. That can be a very big business. Let's see, a wedding cake costs about between $800 to about $1,000 per cake. You've also got the groom's cake. You've got maybe cupcakes or smaller cakes for the guests. It would be easy to imagine a $1,300 order to a venue. And if you have the agreement with that venue to be their go-to person, to be their baker, that could be a pretty sizable business. But remember, you've got to take those baked goods in your private vehicle and deliver those cakes to the uh, the venue. Can anybody think of any other ways they might get to move ahead with this cottage food law and enhance it to kind of grow their income or move ahead? Now, remember, after COVID-19, a lot of people who uh, had jobs and couldn't work at home were kind of restricted from working, and it was really tough. So the cottage food easement allowed these people to do something and earn a sizable income from their home. Yes. I can barely hear you, Janice. I can barely hear you. No, you do not. You do not. This is for this is for non-businesses. You can do this. Um, just put the name of your of your of your company. You can call it uh, Jim's Cakes. But you don't need to form a legal entity to do this. You can do it as a doing business as. That that can be considered. Um, to be done if you meet the requirements of, of the vendor. Um, if you bake the food from your home, you can sell it point to point, but you need to keep in, keep in mind the um, standards for keeping the hot food hot and the cold food cold. Thank <laughs> you. 
anything else unless somebody fell down there. You know, I come from a farming back background, so this is kind of important to me. And when I was uh, younger, working on the farm, there you was seen the chat. Is that it? I don't think so. Did he answer it? Can you set up a stand on the side of the road? Yeah, he answered. I did, I did, yeah. How do you find a co-packer? What is that? A co-packer, yeah. Uh, you would need to just do a simple Google search for co-packers in your area. That is the best thing ever. Because what you can do is you can you can rent or lease their space. They've got all the commercial kitchen stuff and the packing stuff. They will even help you with labeling. And one thing that co-packers can do that you need to realize, let's say that you want to grow from a cottage food industry to an industry that has distribution. You can do your distribution through a co-packer. They can help you with your recipe. They can help you to, to grow that to where you can do bulk recipes and package it and help you with distributing. So that's a way to kind of start something and make it a pretty large side business from your home. Remember, a micro enterprise might start small as a person or a family, but could really grow to be a big industry. Is there another question? Good. Yeah, a uh, co-packer can really be, uh, that's one of the things that really wasn't discussed much back before this uh, rule change back on uh, 1 July. But by using a co-packer and a ghost kitchen to prepare some things that you can't cook at home, the cottage food um, regulations have been eased a little bit, but there are still some important things that you need to be aware of because we're talking about foodborne illness and, and safety of the operation. So with the things that you can't do under the cottage food, there are ways that you can get around that by um, getting it done in a commercial kitchen or a ghost kitchen or using a co-packer to enhance and enlarge your small uh, veteran-owned, military spouse-owned uh, food operation. Where all is everybody from uh, around here? Thank you, Jamie. Because Florida is really a very big agricultural state, realize it or not, we're known for tourism, but some of our biggest industries are citrus and beef cattle in Florida. A lot of uh, crops are grown here that aren't necessarily uh, citrus. So Florida has got a really unique position in the uh, enhancing and growing, you know, crops and uh, chickens, cattle, pork, lamb, that kind of thing, as well as non-traditional things like uh, lavender, mushrooms, and other non-traditional type of food crops. So it's really interesting how big of an agricultural um, advantage there is in Florida. We can work with you on your business if you register for our services at our website there. We are funded by the Small Business Administration we are one of 23 Veterans Business Outreach Centers in America. We operate according to location. We cover all of Florida. And our website is vboc.org. That's Victor Bravo Oscar Charlie.org. And the reason we need you to sign up is so that you can uh, know that we don't charge you for anything. This is paid for you in two ways first, through your military service, and second, through your taxes. We don't charge you for what we do. We don't share or sell your information that you provide with us. And we don't really refer you to anybody outside of the SBA. If you ask us for an accountant, we might give you a list of three or four in the area, a lawyer, maybe three or four in your area. Um, but with this, it's something that you can kind of do on your own and grow and use that uh, rule book as your Bible. This is just something to kind of get you interested in maybe thinking about doing it. If you are operating a cottage food industry now, this will ease up some of the requirements, allow you to earn more money, allow you to know what you can and can't do, how to do the things you can't do, and how to continue to do the things that you can do. And if you're thinking about maybe doing this, to encourage you to move ahead. Because there are ways to get around it if you follow the rules, and different ways to do this to be beneficial, to have a source of income for you and your family. Any, uh, any other questions? Meals like spaghetti, okay? You, you can make the pasta, but you can't make the spaghetti sauce in your own home because of the tomatoes. So you can actually produce pasta, make spaghetti, but you need to rent a commercial kitchen to make the spaghetti sauce because of the uh, 
ability for microbes to get into the uh, tomatoes. So if you have a pasta maker, you can do that at home, but you need to rent a commercial kitchen or even use like a kitchen at your church that's set up with the right amount of hot water, heaters and things like that to actually make the uh, spaghetti sauce. But that answers your question, uh, Ashika. And then again, you have to deliver it uh, person to person. So if you're going to be hired to host a spaghetti dinner, you can make the sauce at a commercial kitchen, can it, bring it home, store it and cool it, and you can make the pasta or buy store-bought pasta if you want to and make the spaghetti and then deliver it to the site. So if it's a, a social or a homecoming dinner or a wedding party or an anniversary or a family reunion and you're hired to cater that event, you can do that by following those things. Remember to include your fixed cost, the cost that it costs you for gathering up the materials. Your labor cost should be included. So when you come up with a quote for them, if you're gonna do that, Make sure that you price it fairly for yourself, otherwise you'll be losing money. So your time should count for something and all the materials that you have to buy and store and move, including your cost of your, of your gas to deliver it, all that should be included in your overall price of the cost of doing business to your, to your customer. So it runs like a regular business, but you'll need to remember that as a business, you're trying to make money. So you need to be sure to, and we can help you with that. We can help you to learn how to, how to make this into a commercial enterprise that can be profitable for you by working with the VVOC. I'm really glad that the state of Florida decided to enhance and lessen the impact of the uh, Florida cottage food industry. I'm glad that we were able to present this to you during National Veteran Small Business Week, where we not only celebrate the services and sacrifice of veterans in Florida, but we also look at that subgroup who are starting a business. And in this case, the subgroup that is starting or considering starting a micro kitchen as a cottage food enterprise in their own home. There's lots of ways to make money and there's rules to follow for your safety, the safety of the consuming public. And the purpose of this presentation was to let you know what's available and out there for you you can follow up on the rules and regulations to kind of maybe excite you about using your cooking skills to maybe make some money. You can make this as big or as small as you want to. And we want to help you. Again, our staff at the Florida Veterans Business Outreach Center, thanks you for your service. Thanks you for your participation in today's webinar. Sorry about the technical glitches. You never know what internet's going to do on a rainy day but we do adapt and overcome. And it's been my pleasure to present this uh, video webinar on the Florida cottage food law and the changes in the law in 2021 and the changes nationwide to cottage food industry laws that have allowed micro businesses to be able to grow and prosper and thrive, especially in Florida. This time I conclude this webinar Thank you for your attention. We look forward to helping you and have a good day and happy National Veterans Small Business Week.